All right. Cool. I, I think everyone is slowly dialing in now. I'm going to give everyone a couple minutes to, to join. Um, today, I'm super, super excited to have Lat Man from Beyond Venture to be with us today. Uh, while everyone is joining, I'm going to um, uh, maybe quickly sort of talk about why we're um, here, what uh, Founders Hong Kong is all about. Um, so, so really quick, uh, our Founder Hong Kong is a nonprofit organization with the missions to connect Silicon Valley um, and Hong Kong. And we absolutely believe that Hong Kong could be the next tech hub for the world, um, not just for Asia. So the intent for this nonprofit is all about hope to bring amazing um, investor like Latman to you know, share his experience with you as a, as a founder, as an investor in the past um, right now. And, and then also to sort of share as much of like education and learning with, with the founders um, and entrepreneur community uh, in Hong Kong. So um, a couple of sort of like notes in addition to sort of our monthly uh, investor chat, we um, starting in 2021, we have a few initiative. Uh, we'll continue our VC discussions. Um, for January, we're gonna have Kylie Ng, uh, from 500 Startup uh, Southeast Asia, the managing partner to be our um, January guest. And then in 2021, we also have folks from uh, Se Sequoia. We have folks from Monks Hill. We have folks from, um, I'm working on Andreessen Horowitz and many, many amazing investors to join us because many of them actually do actively invest in Hong Kong. And I really wanted to bring more sort of international investor to, to join us. Um, and then in addition to that, uh, Philip Lam, who is our chief mentorship officer, is going to do more and more like product and also growth uh, conversation. So we'll also do that once a month. And last but not least, for those of you who are not part of it yet, uh, we are hosting almost daily now um, office hours with a lot of experts from Silicon Valley. Um, many of you may not know, we have amazing, amazing Hong Kong born and many of them speak Cantonese um, in big companies like Google, Apple, Facebook, LinkedIn. Microsoft, uh, Salesforce, all of them actually are willing to speak Cantonese with you and also help you and guide you with a lot of things that you know we need help with as a community. And these office hours literally is available every day for you uh, on Google Calendar. So get in touch with Philip uh, at foundershongkong.com. Uh, so with that, I'm gonna stop uh, sharing this awesome screen of Latman's face. <laughs> and then I'm gonna get into the conversation uh, with my man. And, and by the way, um, this conversation is recorded. We're making it live on Facebook. And then on top of that, I encourage all of you guys to ask questions um, towards the end of the conversation. I also going to actually bring you to the video itself. So that man, you get to see your face. All right, uh, that man, let's, let's get started. And I'm going to maybe actually tell us a little bit about you, your story. Um, you started your own company. Um, We'd love to learn yeah. more about sort of your background and why you're yeah. here today. Yeah, actually, um, in my last uh, 20 plus or 20 to 30 years of career, most most of my time, I think uh, 20 years plus is uh, as a founder. Okay, uh, I found my first company back in uh, late 90s with my brother. And, uh, and luckily, I mean, we got a pretty good exit in uh, five years time. So in year 2000, I found another company. Uh, that company took me a, for a long time for exit. I mean, that company, we won it for almost 15 years, almost mm -hmm. 15 years, yeah. And then exit. And uh, after that exit, uh, we also spin off uh, a number of companies. That means we sort of incubated another three to four companies, yeah. And then I do uh, angel investments. Uh, after uh, two, three years of angel investments, I uh, found Beyond Ventures with my, my friend, uh, uh, some of my friends together. Yeah, so to do formal uh, uh, VC uh, investment. So actually for uh, VC investment, or I'm sort of a, a, a newbie. I uh, just started for about uh, late uh, 2017. So about three years from now, yeah. So uh, I'm more like a founder rather than a really uh, professional vent, uh, venture capitalist. That's awesome. It's great to have you because we don't have enough like Hong Kong founders like turn into investors and we need more of you 
um, to really you know, help and share your experience as a founder. So why the name Beyond Ventures? Oh yeah, um, when we start this uh, uh, venture fund, uh, one of the key reasons we started is uh, we want to uh, mainly help Hong Kong startups. Okay, when you think about the names, uh, we want to be uh, representative to, uh, to Hong Kong. So uh, of course there's a line wall or Victoria, but at least a little bit old fashioned. So we want to be, want to be more subtle. So um, that's pretty interesting, you know, uh, beyond the band. Um, they didn't uh, have any new song for maybe 20 years or at least 15 years, but mm. they still really popular even among the youngsters in mainland China. So mm. you can see that uh, their old songs, the spirits, everything is um, sort of uh, uh, representing uh, Hong Kong. So, uh, and of, of course, I mean, beyond and uh, uh, Hong Hong, it's also a good name for even for a VC. So that's why we just uh, uh, pick it. Uh, if people know that, they will know that we are from Hong Kong. But people, if they don't know the band, uh, that's fine. I mean, they still think, oh, it's, it's just a normal VC name. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when, when I actually tell some of my, my friends in, in the US about Beyond Venture, they immediately get it. So I think like, is it a oh, really yeah. awesome <laughs> for, uh, for Hong Kong. And some of them actually told, told me that they've been to that concert. I'm like, oh my God, I wish I was, I got the chance. <laughs> uh, so, so uh, Lemon, you are located, where are you located? Uh, Hong Kong. And then what geographies do you invest in? Uh, Hong Kong and China, mainly Hong Kong. Got it. And then what stage do you focus on in terms of investing? Uh, mostly early stage from seed to uh, maybe a or, or PB, yes, we got maybe 20% is a B and after, but majority is a, around A, yeah. Got it. And then do you focus on specific sectors or industry? Uh, we have a couple of sectors we are focusing on. Uh, one is uh, semiconductors, uh, the other is uh, uh, healthcare. Mm. And the third one will be um, SaaS like type, uh, platform type of uh, 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 business. Ah, and these fee are the most uh, investment I in. Yeah. And and then how big is your uh, your current fund? Uh, fifty million US. Got it. And, and plus the matching from uh, Hong Kong government, that means uh, adding another twenty five uh, million. So yeah, that's the size. Yeah. Nice. And and then your so in in Hong Kong uh, these days, like for for C stage, what's your average tech size for most of these investments? Uh, okay. Um, actually, um, most of our investment will be one to two million uh, uh, US our part. Okay, we probably will bring in uh, some uh, co investment. For example, like uh, what just said, uh, uh, the Korean government, uh, it will be uh, two to one. For example, we invest two million, they will invest uh, one million. Uh, the smallest yeah. check we all, uh, we offered is uh, uh, 200k uh, US. The largest we uh, invested in single check is uh, five, 5 million US. So but majority would be one to two. Got it. Um, and, and then do you prefer, how many deals do you do per year? Uh, usually it's eight to 12. We do 10 investment this year. Oh God, that's a lot. You're busy even for COVID. Do you, do you prefer <laughs> a lead, lead or follow? Um, for okay, for Hong Kong projects, uh, most of the time we, we lead, uh, particularly uh, if we um, uh, also introducing the Hong Kong government funding, uh, we need to be the lead. Yeah. Uh, but for projects, they're more uh, focusing on China uh, because we are not a uh, native fund in China. So in that case usually we co investment. Got it. And um, do you have any minimum uh, equity ownership requirement when you invest? Uh, we don't. We don't. I see. And then, um, do you usually take a board seat? Uh, for lead, we, we must take a board seat. And usually we prefer if we don't have a board seat, we want to have an observer seat. Mm, got it. If, if I actually, if I'm a founder and I already raised some money from Angel, is it too late to come talk to you? No, no, no. Actually, uh, many of our projects, uh, they already got uh, Angel fundings. Uh, uh, and, and usually we are the one who after the Angel funding. Yeah. I see. Um, and if I'm raising Series B or Series C, um, should I contact you? Sure. As I said, uh, we got maybe 20% or something. Uh, that would be uh, B and, and later. 
Yeah, so um, we, we, particularly Hong Kong projects, uh, we are not, um, uh, uh, we are stage uh, 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 agnostic, yeah. Got it. So, so now I, I think, you know, most of our attendees today are founders. They, they need a lot of advice and you know, just more training and advice in terms of pitching. So what will be some of your pitching advice for, for us? Like assuming I'm, I'm a founder too. <laughs> yeah, I think um, the most important is um, precise and concise. You need to understand, I mean, uh, we, we see this, we, are, we are a normal person. We don't understand uh, every industries and particularly the, particularly the some um, special situation of, of your uh, industries. So um, you need to make it really uh, simple and easy to under, understand for, 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 the, um, for the VC so they can get into the situation really quickly mm. and they can see your logic really quickly. So um, try to uh, participate with some, some people that uh, don't understand your industry at all and just see whether they can grab, it, uh, uh, grab the, 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 log, uh, the, log, uh, the, the logic quickly. Uh, that's important, concise and precise. Mm, agree. Um, I think sometimes like a lot of the founder gets so excited about what they're doing yeah. and they go right into how the product work. And most of the time I'm like, I have no clue what you're talking about. Um, yeah, yeah. And because we don't have the background context and everything. Yeah, it's, we, they, they think that they, we should understand that. But most of the time we don't have the context. We uh, get a lot of time to understand that the whole thing. Me too. Yeah. And, and then most importantly, I, I, I would love to hear your thoughts. It's really, I mean, even though, you know, many of you who's in the audience and expert on what you're doing, but at the end of the day, we're looking for a founder entrepreneur who can run that business, right? So a lot of the conversation with that man is really about sort of like talking through how you think and to build that business, not just purely for the product. So in that sense, let's say, uh, let me, and I'm, I'm the founder and I'm like pitching you and, you know, tell you all these stuff about, you know, hey, this is going to be huge, right? Mm -hmm. um, not to talk like Donald Trump. Uh, what would be like the number one thing that you look for um, in a founder? Um, yeah, you just said something that many founders think that, oh, okay, I need to be, uh, get the, the VC, the excited, I need to present a huge market. Um, I think that may not be the, the number one priority. The number one priority is um, you need to let the VC think that you are a person can uh, give really clear communications and think really logically. Because from a VC, we, we know that, especially early stage, there's a lot of situation that we can't imagine or you can't even imagine will happen. So how quickly, how fast the founder can learn, how fast they can grow, and how can they adopt to the situation? Uh, that's the most important uh, 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 factors we try to evaluate. So uh, you need to make people think that, uh, uh, understand that you are a person that can think logically and can communicate uh, effectively. I think these are two uh, major factors. Go out and telling them, uh, oh, that's a huge market. Yeah. Yeah, this is huge. All right. <laughs> so, so in that sense, so, so let's say like I pitched pretty well and it seems like it's some, you know, I think very clearly, what is your investment decision process look like? Um, okay, the first thing we need to uh, con convince ourselves is, uh, do we trust this uh, uh, founder? Trust means uh, not just um, the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, credibility of anything, but uh, we also think about uh, what, I just, what I just said, uh, whether they can grow, whether they can uh, adopt to the situation, whether they are, they are the, uh, someone can listen to others. Okay, mm -hmm. these are the trust we need to build. Okay, the second thing is that uh, we need to uh, have certain understand to the uh, major trends on, on this uh, on the direction they are doing. Is this something that we agree? And the third thing would be uh, we probably do a lot of uh, internal research. Uh, be frank, I mean when we think about oh that's a good idea, that's the trend we 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 we, we also agree. And oh the founder is pretty pretty good. Most of the time we do is uh, we need to search in the same sector. What are the uh, existing uh, 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 yeah, uh, payers this and we will try to meet all of them and let us to understand the situations. 
Yeah. Mm. So these mm. are the key uh, fee process. After all these fee process, we believe, okay, that's a good trend. That's a market that uh, 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 have a, uh, a lot of potentials. And these are the, the, the payers. These are the founders we believe uh, he's going to win. Then we will do investment. Yeah. Yeah, and I also like have a couple of times, although rarely most of the founders don't do this, but one of my, the founder that I actually end up investing, they, wow, like they almost like when they do the follow-up email, um, it was all the studies, all the statistics, just reading through that take forever. But it's amazing like how you, you think like investors know everything, we actually don't. So we're, yes. and like we're, we're lazy people. So if you already have all the market research, we'd love to read it and just don't assume that we, we know. Um, but yeah, that's great. Thank you for being so clear. Um, so if you, if you, okay, now, now like let's change topic. Um, if you have to pick only one of your favorite portfolio company, which one would that be and why? Uh, that would be a really difficult one. I mean, okay, we got someone to uh, give us a really good return, 20, 20 times plus. We got some a portfolio that um, they are doing something that is really good for Hong Kong. Uh, they may not be uh, uh, hundreds of billions of dollar companies, but uh, they can tell people that they still that still can be a, a, a good um, uh, entrepreneur uh, or or a good startup in Hong Kong. We also get company that um, the company is uh, sinking, but due to the founder, he's willing to sacrifice something that most people uh, 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 will not, and and just save the company. So um, you know, it's really hard pick. I mean. I love all of them, yeah, <laughs> and uh, if all, all, any, uh, all of them got their own uh, uniqueness, yeah. Yeah, I get it. They're all your babies. Got it. Yeah, um, yeah, that's what you say. The, so if you were to pick one company that you wish you did invest, what would, who would that be? Hmm, <laughs> uh, okay, I still want to pick one, uh, one in Hong Kong. Yeah, I didn't, okay. Uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, really great company in US, in, in China, yeah. But I think if I want to invest, uh, it's one uh, in Hong Kong, uh, La Lambouf. Mm. Lambouf, okay, yeah. Good. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. one. And, uh, and uh, the reason I pick it is, uh, okay, I mean, big, big, uh, because we, uh, the, form, the fund is formed too late, we, we miss it. Um, and uh, it's the one that, really can uh, show how Hong Kong people can success, no matter in China or outside China. Yeah. Yeah, yeah agree. Um, actually, by the way, to do a little advertising for Hong Kong, I think there is now at least like eight unicorn and more, right? From WeLab, Lala Move, GoGoVan, uh, SenseTime. All right, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna name it all, but there's plenty of amazing companies in Hong Kong. So. Plenty for you to pick from. Um, who is your favorite founder and CEO of all time? Hmm. Actually, there's more than more than one. Yeah, as I said, um, some uh, can particularly in this uh, pandemic, you can see some founder just uh, uh, deal with it or adapt to it so quickly. Yeah, and uh, again, I said uh, I also see founders uh, that uh, working. Uh, in the last uh, couple, five years, six years, so focused, concentrate on one thing. Or oh, I also see founder that, uh, as I said, I mean, going to sacrifice, I mean, for example, like step down from the CEO uh, position, give out a lot of shares in order to turn around the companies and turn out it's, it's really success on, on that. So um, uh, again, I mean, all of them got really good, Uniqueness and uh, actually, I think uh, even even founder they didn't success. I still really admire they willing to uh, uh, come out and, and start the business because I know how hard is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, who's your favorite investor of all time? Investor, you mean in uh, invest in uh, my previous ventures or, or our co-investor? Anything. Or what do you mean? Anything. Anyone. Huh, interesting. I, I, I come to in my mind, I see a lot of big names, but uh, uh, I still think the, uh, the angel investor invested in my ventures before uh, are the most um, uh, best investors. Uh, I think the major <laughs> reason is uh, 
And when you, uh, a good angel investors will help you to uh, go for a lot of tough, tough situ uh, situations. Yeah, I remember uh, one of um, uh, my angel investors. I mean, turn out they are a huge fund now. I mean, they are not doing any angel investment. They are doing a, a PE type of a uh, angel investment, talking about uh, uh, multi billion dollars kind of funds. Okay, but uh, the founder of that a PE fund, uh, he actually save my second ventures. Hmm. Yeah, as a as an investor, not not putting money, not putting money. Okay, by the time uh, we start the company in 2000, 2000s, and uh, we've been through the dot com bubble and the SaaS by the time, hmm. and uh, we basically broke. I mean, we we owe uh, uh creditors for about uh fifty million Hong Kong dollars. And we, we, we can't generate enough cash, cash. Although we are cash flow positive in operation, we can't generate any cash to repay that. And uh, that investor uh, worked with me hand in hand to do uh, negotiation with all these creditors and eventually saved the company. That's awesome. What's the name of their fund now? Honey, Honey Capital. Oh, Honey Capital. Got it. I heard of them. Very cool. All right, um, rapid fire, a few more questions and we have some audience, uh, audience questions. Um, what's your favorite startup event? Uh, the founders, founders Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Everybody should continue to be here. Uh, what's your favorite startup uh, or tech media that you follow? Tech media? Uh, actually, I follow information pretty, pretty closely. Uh, they, ah, yeah, that's a great one. Um, and if you were to explain to to a founder, and let's say the founder is just so good, they have multiple term sheet, and and you will have to explain like why beyond venture, what makes you different, what would you say? Um, that's a the situation we uh, often encounter. Yeah. Okay. So I think the first thing we, we talk to the founder and say, um, okay, especially this in, in China. I mean, uh, not necessarily the same in uh, Hong Kong and US. Mm. Uh, first of all, uh, they need to think about whether all these terms should be uh, really uh, uh, enforced it or, 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 or really executed. Okay, because in China, not, not all the terms should uh, really uh, execute it. Okay, and the second, I think, uh, particularly for early stage, I think, uh, the help from the fund is most important. I remember one uh, one project, the founder got free time sheet. Uh, one of them is a really big one. Uh, I just say, uh, how about I give you three funders to call so we can call them and understand uh, uh, what we have for them. So mm -hmm. he did, he did. And eventually uh, uh, work with us, yeah. So I think uh, in the early stage, uh, pick a good fund. Uh, the fund means that they really willing to uh, uh, work hand in hand, hand in hand with funders. Because as I said, the early stage funders, uh, they still have a long, long way to go and a lot of things to learn. So right. uh, they need to pick someone that uh, uh, can help them to to grow and, and learn. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Completely agree. Um, do. Oh, which do you do you guys usually help with future financing? So, so let's say you invested in seed. Um, do you usually lead the next round or or like help with introduce other investors? Uh, yeah, it depends on the situation. Usually, when we invest, we already plan to uh, think about what kind of uh, potential investor can do the next one. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and in fact, uh, most of the case we try to encourage the. Uh, the founders, especially the Hong Kong staff, uh, see whether they they should expose to uh, the Chinese uh, VC, VC fund because they uh, uh, have a lot of money, so they are willing to give a, a much a higher valuation, a bigger amount of checks. So uh, we got all these uh, uh, connections. So uh, when mm. we do the investment, we will one of the key uh, factor we evaluate is uh, will the founders uh, able to. Um, uh, uh, exposed to major capital. That means either US or, or China. Got it. I see. Awesome. And and then uh, last but not least, what's the um, best way to get in touch with you? Um. Uh, you can e email me or or uh, WhatsApp or WeChat uh, or Facebook. <laughs> uh, LinkedIn. Actually, I use all these kind of social media. Yeah. And then it's just uh, it's Lightman at Beyond Ventures. 
Yes, let men at the Avengers. It's pretty simple. Let men at the Avengers. Awesome. HK. Cool. Um, now I'm going to actually open up uh, for the audience to ask live questions. And the first person I'm going to promote as um, panelist is going to be Blake. So give me one second, Blake. I'm going to promote you as, uh, and please show your video, maybe tell us your, your name, company, and then your question, please. Hi, Bay. Can hear you. Can hear you. Can you mute it? Oh yeah, you're good now. Uh, still can't hear. Yeah. Come here. Hmm. Maybe your microphone is not working. Is it muted? No? Yeah, it's him. It's him. He's, he's already unmute. Um, sorry, Blake, like I, I'm gonna read it for you, but your video is still on uh, since you type it out. Um, so Blake have two startup. The, the first, um, Uology in, in men, that's the first one. The second one is helping depression and assisting company when any type of crisis happen. Um, mm. The first one, it wants to develop a device and create it with a Chinese factory. And, uh. and he's looking for, to develop a tool to Hong Kong customers. Um, his grandpa is partnered up with a large Chinese factory. He ran a company for many years selling to most popular animated Santa Claus sold in Walmart. That's what you said. And all the retail. Mm. It's 100 million in re annual revenue. Um, wanted to hear your advice and help. And we'd love to share a pitch deck with you. Okay. Um, what, what do you think about this, which is there is a device and there is a very targeted audience and it sounds like Blake also want to go after Hong Kong market. Um, actually, the, um, the medical market, particularly the um, medical equipment uh, is a pretty hot uh, market in China. Um, before, I mean, maybe two, three years ago or five years ago, there's a lot of um, uh, so-called um, to China. Okay, so you got some good technologies in, in outside and they try to uh, bring that technology to China and uh, using the, the lower production cost there and produce the product and target locally in China. That's one of the ma uh, major trend in um, three, four years ago. Uh, but now they are shifting. Uh, you probably understand that uh, due to the tension between US and China, uh, yeah. There's a lot of local developed technologies there. So that means uh, there's a lot of local uh, 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 the overseas research peoples. They go back to China and develop the whole IP inside China. So um, if you just look, off, look for the production cost, that's pretty easy. I mean, uh, you just go to Southern China and uh, have some uh, people stationed there and you will got the best uh, supply chain in the world for that. Uh, but you need to think about uh, your target market. Is it target US or, or China? Because uh, medical equipment, you need broad certifications there. And in China nowadays, they prefer uh, the IPs, the patents, uh, locally developed. So you need to be aware of that. Yeah. Got it. Is it? Yeah. Yes. So for uh, so so cute. <laughs> it's awesome. Sorry, Blake, the, the, um, and I you know maybe like my two cents also on my side. Um, I think, you know, if you're thinking about funding and there's a hardware related things or healthcare related things, usually um, there, there are, I mean, obviously Letman had invested and very comfortable with both. Mo investor like me, which is very software oriented um, and very focused particular enterprise and data infrastructure, um, and we also look at like fintech infrastructure related to blockchain. In this case, like we shy away from anything that is like device, um, just cause like we have no, no know-how whatsoever, can't help you there. And then in some sense, like healthcare, we, we do want to invest in system related things, but very specific, we, we can't help. So I highly recommend like all the audience, if you are researching on who will be the investor, most of the investors are actually quite clear on what they invest, yep. don't invest. Um, those will be the area of research before you approach an investor. In this case, Lemon is very comfortable with both. So that's awesome. Uh, so now- I'm is really good on that. I mean, particularly on the medical, I mean, uh, many funds, uh, uh, they will specific 
uh, or investing in medicals. So we, we need you need to look at the, these kind of funds. Actually, uh, for this kind of projects, usually we work with a fund that uh, particularly uh, focus on medical area. Awesome, cool. Um, so Blake, good luck with that. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to now change role to change role attendees. Um, and now I'm going to have Jean So to promote Jeans to be a panelist. Oh, sorry. Okay, I promote the wrong person to be panelist. Yeah, one, yeah, second. Yeah. one second, one second. Okay, sorry, Florian, mistake. All right, Jeans, show yourself. Wait. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Uh, good, good, good. Wait, thanks for thanks for your wonderful sharing. You can hear me, right? Yeah, sure. Cool. So, uh, yeah, thanks so much for you know Beyond Ventures and Batman for really like you know pushing and um, helping a lot of Hong Kong startups. You have invested in a lot of um, great uh, startups in Hong Kong. So one of the key challenges we know in Hong Kong is about you know scaling the startup out of Hong Kong, right? It is very very difficult. And a lot of VCs, when, when they invest, they are looking for returns in multiples, right? And I often um, struggle as well myself to, when I look at startups to see like, hey, how, what, how, how would they be able to scale? You know, um, because that the, the variation or the variability is really huge. And uh, sometimes the fund, you know, they don't, like for VC funds, they usually don't have a very long, um, mm. time frame, right? So, mm. and, and we can also see in Hong Kong, it takes quite a while uh, for the startups to ramp up. Like, let's say we take a uh, short line, for example, right? They, they, it's taken them a number of years. They just raised the 20 million uh, round, uh, which is great. Uh, they have come a long way, uh, but it, it usually takes some time um, to grow. So, you know, one of my question is like, you know, as, as you raise your fund um, previously, um, do you actually have the pressure to, you know, find startups uh, that actually are able to scale fast? And at the same time, when I look at your portfolio, you also like, you know, um, put a lot of uh, investment into Hong Kong, which is great. But I also wonder, you know, if, you know, sometimes it gives you some pressure to like justify with your LPs uh, to, 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 to say that, hey, you know, we could, we can generate the return or, or you don't really have that pressure because your LP is very understanding and they know that they also want to support Hong Kong, maybe. Uh, well, good, good, good question. Huh? I mean, uh, when we're doing the fundraising for Beyond Ventures, I mean, you can see, tell from the name, is a, a fund for Hong Kong, okay? And our, and our tagline is from Hong Kong for Hong Kong, okay? So when we're doing fundraising with the LPs, uh, we also, we often facing one question is that, you say, hey, Lemme, so this fund, is it uh, a charity or, or is it for profit? You need to make it clear to, to us, yeah? okay? So I, I, tell, I tell them, it's for profit for sure. Yeah, what I believe is uh, um, when you try and doing something good, itself, we need to be sustainable. That means uh, you need to keep generating things, uh, 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 the, the, the profits to doing, keep doing good, okay? So uh, luckily, I think uh, we already invested in about three years. And recently we start uh, trying to tell our LPs uh, what kind of um, uh, the outlook of Beyond Venture will be. I think we are being doing good. Um, uh, we are trying to be the top quartile of the, the funds worldwide, in terms of worldwide. That means uh, we turn net three times and above to the, um, uh, to the investors. So we are toward to that uh, path, okay. So uh, it also tells people that uh, investing in Hong Kong related startup doesn't mean that uh, it is not profitable. Yeah, okay. So um, back to your questions. Uh, yes, um, in Hong Kong startups, they always facing one key question is uh, uh, how to scale, how to scale outside Hong Kong. Okay, that's one of the key questions they need to answer. Actually, there's um, uh, a lot of uh, startups we turn down or pass it. Uh, it's not by telling them that, okay, actually, you, do, you don't need VC money. I mean, uh, uh, have two, four, uh, three, four years, uh, really tough, hard, hard time. 
the company can have, um, say, a couple million Hong Kong dollar profit a year. It's really good for founders already, but it, it's not an investable project for, for VC because uh, if you can't lease or you can't, uh, 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 to the scale that got acquired, the VC can't be exit, exit, can, cannot have exit, exit, yeah. okay. So, um, but I think there's still uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, Hong Kong founders can uh, scale out of uh, uh, Hong Kong, uh, like the one we invested, no matter in, in Sensheim, uh, uh, Pinetics, okay, uh, Chandao and all these guys, yeah. And actually we do invest, just focus in Hong Kong uh, startups, but uh, we need to make it really uh, uh, careful that they have a huge market to, to go for. Uh, we invest a number of e-commerce platform in Hong Kong, just doing e-commerce in Hong Kong, but we still wow. believe they can do uh, uh, really well and uh, bring us a really good return. I think one of the, the project, just doing e-commerce in Hong Kong, we expect probably uh, 10 times plus return for us. Yeah, wow. so uh, we still have a really strong belief uh, picking the white sectors, uh, doing in, in the white timing in Hong Kong, just locally, still can generate good return for VC. Nice. Yeah. And wh while we have Jin, Jin is also like the founder of um, Startup HK and now renamed it to Greater Startup Startup Greater Bay. Yeah. Yes. GBA. All right. Um, so while I have both of you on this, I'd love to actually chat about like the, the Hong Kong ecosystem. Like, do you guys, you know, when Startup HK first started, the ecosystem is fairly small. And now we literally have a fund called Beyond Venture for Hong Kong, <laughs> by Hong Kong people, which actually have improved so much. We didn't have that before. What right. do you guys think in terms of the ecosystem, especially COVID is just so hard. Like how, how would you describe what, what is what, what have we done well in the past few years as an eco ecosystem and what do we need to continue to improve? Maybe Latman, you can start first. Um, okay, actually I think the overall startup environment is, uh, uh, is going pretty good in Hong Kong in the last couple of years. And uh, I think and more, more and more and more, uh, I hope in the next uh, two, three years because in our portfolio, we're going to see uh, three to four IPOs in, in the coming next, so next, next, next year. So I hope that we're setting samples to uh, people that uh, actually Hong Kong startup, they either can go out of Hong Kong or even just do in Hong Kong, they still uh, got a, a pretty good uh, uh, business. Yeah. So um, I'm pretty uh, bullish and optimistic on the local uh, startup environment. But uh, I, we, in the last uh, couple of years, we also trying to do a lot is uh, how to bridging the uh, local home startups uh, to the major uh, capital markets, particularly in China. So yeah. we have a couple uh, startups. Uh, we help them to uh, fine tune a little bit on, on, the, on the developments. Uh, particularly, they, they set up uh, office or, or exposure in China. Mm -hmm. it's, it's set up office in China doesn't mean that you need to do China market. It still can be an overseas market. Even uh, today, uh, a lot of huge Chinese VC, they love the 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 the, 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 uh, the, the overseas market uh, stories. Yeah. Okay, so but we need to help the uh, local uh, Hong Kong staff to prepare to uh, uh, in touch with the the uh, Chinese. Uh, um, uh, capital market. That's one of the key things we do in the last uh, two, three years. Got it. Jin, what do you think since you're very involved? Um, yeah, sure. I mean, obviously, like, you know, it's come a long way uh, from 10 years ago. And like, I think nowadays, like back then, you know, when we first started and 10 years ago, it was a lot of apps, right? Uh, we have moved away from the apps type of thinking of startups to more like, you know, how do I, you know, to more like, you know, how do I actually build like products? Uh, I think more and more, I think um, founders are now getting into the, the product level type of thinking. And also we see a lot of um, very interesting also platforms getting created uh, by founders in Hong Kong. And um, the other thing that I find interesting is that the corporates are starting to, take notice 
of startups, uh, there are a lot more collaborations going on uh, between corporates and startups, which mm. is great, right? Mm. Um, I think more of that should uh, happen. And of course, uh, collaborations between government and startup as well, which is uh, really important to, to show that, hey, you know what? Startups can move fast and uh, we can also help corporate move faster. So uh, from that side, I think like, you know, there's a lot of potential Hong Kong could, could, you could do, right? Um, and I see quite a few funds on that, uh, on the prop tech side. Uh, I see alliance between like uh, corporates, um, developers, like the real estate developers um, coming together to, to figure out like, um, to share knowledge on startups, right? Like, like they'll talk about pilots, what things they have tried, what technology they have tried to share with each other so that, um, you know, they can potentially find interesting technology to deploy uh, in properties in Hong Kong. And that effort is led by Sinoland. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a very good one. So, um, and then they also use some of the technology that um, Lapman invested in. Uh, <laughs> and um, also, um, well, for me, like uh, I also joined MTR recently. So I'm leading like their um, innovation, well, one of the initiatives in the innovation department, which is quite new. So even MTR is now getting to the bandwagon of like, you know, looking to partner uh, with startups and also creating startups um, to test out ideas. So we should be seeing more and more of that uh, in, um, in Hong Kong. And I think it's, 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 it's great for everyone. It's gonna that's, be exciting. That's awesome. Thank you, Jean, uh, surprise guest. I'm going to bring out our next, um, next person. Good to see you, Jean. See you. Austin, bye. All right, um, next person, and I'm really bad on like, um, Pranay, I don't want to butcher your name. Pranay, please, please show yourself and ask your questions. Hi, um, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, hi, hi. hi my name's Pranay. Um, I'm a student studying at HKU. And um, so, okay, so right now, just a little context. Uh, I'm working on an app and um, Essentially, what the app does is that it's a, I'm just going to, a one-liner is it's a Tinder for finding friends, but there is logic behind it. So for example, um, I mean, Tinder is blind swiping left, right, right? Uh, so what I have, um, I have done some research and over time, I've been able to come up with an algorithm which can match people based on their personality and sense of humor. And um, so essentially, what I was wondering was that right now I'm at the stage where I'm developing the app. So it's like in prototyping and I'm like talking to um, potential users and stuff like that. But um, um, there was this uh, incubator that came in, um, in my uh, view where I was considering applying because um, they also take uh, startups from the idea stage. Uh, but my concern uh, was that it's a, it's a China based incubator. And I was wondering uh, what the implications of that would be in terms of branding when I uh, decide to take the app um, from say, like I'll be piloting it at HKU, but then I want to take it to universities um, all over if everything works well. But would the um, would being in a China-based incubator be um, have some implications in terms of branding for the app? Because I mean, barring say um, TikTok and other big uh, companies from China, there tends to be some resistance, is what my opinion is uh, for China for Chinese apps. And I don't, I mean, that's my concern. I don't want to be branded as something mm -hmm. like that uh, without being political, of course. Uh, what is, mm -hmm. yeah, just wanted some opinion. Yeah. Um, I think the key question is uh, where is your major uh, targeted market? Um, because you know, the in China, the ecosystem, uh, the, the, I mean, the infrastructures is really different from uh, non China. So your app is building to target, say, uh, US or, or European or, or Southeast Asia or target the Chinese local market. So if you target Chinese local market, I think that's fine. I mean, uh, uh, China-based incubators. But if you are not, um, I, I doubt whether they can they can help you. Yeah. So that also related to your questions. I mean, if you're targeting the, the local Chinese market, then branding not. will not be a problem. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm not, not okay, yeah. Local, yeah. Uh, then I don't know why you, you want to uh, have a, a join a China-based uh, incubator. I mean, are they outside China already or? or or just uh, from China or is it you need to 
uh, join locally? Um, I think they, they're okay with doing it um, virtually or something like that this time. Uh, but oh, okay. I mean, it's just one of the incubators that came to came in my site, and I was like, I was just curious about this. Uh, would it matter a lot? I mean, usually the incubator is providing you uh, uh, some force or some uh, uh, mentors or some yeah. connections. Yeah. So uh, I assume a, a China-based incubator usually they give you uh, all the uh, China-related resources. So uh, if you are not targeting Chinese market, yeah, maybe you should think about it. Right, right, right. Makes sense. Um, okay. Yeah. I, well, my previous one was was an incubator. So um, I, I think at the end of the day, incubator is good for a few things. One is um, some incubator really em emphasize on growth. Some incubator really about all about it, like the network connecting you with other founders to learn together and access to future investors. Um, ideally, if the, in, the incubator should help you with that specific market, as Latman was saying, it sort of doesn't make as much sense going to the Chinese mainland incubator if you're not going after China market at all, but it will make so much sense if you are going after China market. So in some sense, mm, I, like in, in Southeast Asia, I don't know if Kylie is doing a 500 Southeast Asia incubator per se. We like 500, my previous fund mainly in the US. Um, but although these days you're right, thanks to COVID, everything is virtual. <laughs> and also like YC, YC now also have the virtual, virtual like they have started school and also like the, yeah. not doesn't take as much equity. Um, the key thing is really evaluate every single incubator based on their network. And very yeah. similar to what Latman was saying, uh, do due diligence with other founders, uh, not only with funds, but also with incubator. So if you are researching on potentially joining one because it's really lonely to build companies, it's good to have other founders to be around yeah. you, you know, like super passionate. Uh, it'll, so it'll be, I would suggest maybe, you know, ask other founder who had joined certain incubator um, and see if they have a good experience that can help you to decide which one to join. Um, Hong Kong, you also have iDendron, right? Um, yeah, yeah, which... yeah. Um, I guess the only thing was that uh, they wanted to register the company, but right now, since I'm in the ideation stage, um, I haven't registered the company yet. So probably at a later point. Yeah. yeah. Um, Actually, okay, I can so, uh, give you one sample. I mean, uh, again, just as you said, uh, you think about your target market, and try to find an incubator that can help you in that target market. Uh, for example, like Japan, uh, a pretty coast market. Okay, actually one of our investment, a Hong Kong startup. Okay, uh, we able to reach them to uh, uh, a, Chi a Japanese uh, uh, bootcamp uh, incubators and, and they won and they do really well in that incubator. And, and then they get into the market. Now, uh, JL, Japan, <clears throat> Osaka government, and a lot of uh, local uh, business and uh, potentially some joint ventures there. So uh, think about your target market and then look for the uh, incubator can help you. Okay, um, and in general, do you guys think that it's a good idea to do an incubator or um, what is the general opinion? I think it's good, yeah. Okay. Yeah, a, good okay. a good incubator can have a lot. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That. Uh, but I do have one one uh, a suggestion is I have also seen companies that's nonstop nonstop <laughs> like incubating like forever. So so like if you if you have a if you go into one uh, is enough. Like I literally have yeah. seen certain company went to five, and I'm thinking, you know, like you know, sometimes like you see amazing student just always want to be in school forever don't, don't be that person <laughs> so, right, yeah uh, pick one and go all in and learn as much as possible um mm -hmm. and then do a reference check because you i think the other founder will help you a lot to decide which one is good for you got it okay yeah. thank you so much thank you for your thank questions you. bye 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 um Oh, um, <laughs> Gene, Gene already come on, but but he wants to know which of your company I work with JREs in Japan. Oh yeah, it's one of our company called Mapsys. They do uh, indoor mapping. Ah, yeah, they they already working for uh, yeah JR yeah. <clears throat> cool, awesome. Um, so 
Um, Lemon, I think I'm going to close the open Q&A and I have a couple of final questions for you. Um, one is, how does COVID change your work or in terms of fundraising environment in Hong Kong? Um, well, I mean, first thing, uh, many we, uh, Zoom meetings, much more than before, everything go virtual. So actually, uh, in the VC industries, in certain way, the productivity is increased because uh, the number of meetings we have now is much more than, than before. Yep. Uh, the, the bad thing is, um, but for us, it's still okay. Um, for due diligence, it's a little bit uh, delayed because uh, uh, you, you can't go to the, the site and try it out or see the people. There will be a delay in the due diligence but, uh, because we got people in Hong Kong and, and China, we still be uh, okay with that. Um, and also the, uh, the COVID make things become extreme. Extreme means that some, some company doing really bad uh, during this period and some company just doing super in this uh, period. So that make the, um, uh, the valuations become tricky because uh, if company doing really well now, I mean, they expect a, a much higher valuations. So the negotiation of uh, valuations will be, uh, I would say more uh, tougher than before, but we still, but we see a lot of companies just work at high in this period, yeah. Yeah, this is good to know. And, and yeah, for and in some sense, regardless of where you are located, and for Hong Kong founders, is is a great opportunity because even for US investor, who cares where where you located? So it's a really good opportunity. And plus, all of us are stuck at home anyway, so it's time to pitch. All right. Um, my final, <laughs> final final question before we wrap up. Um, any prediction for 2021, like in terms of investment trends, prediction? What do you think mm -hmm. on that? Um, as I said, uh, uh, our investment mostly in Hong Kong and China, so I, I can't say anything about in uh, US. Probably Edith can, can uh, uh, give more insight for that. In China and Hong Kong, I think um, before in China, we see all these kind of e-commerce giants, uh, uh, more business type, uh, business innovation type of uh, uh, ventures. We're going to really success. But in the last uh, 18 months, we see that uh, uh, healthcare, semiconductors, hardware, uh, uh, advanced manufacturing, uh, not business more type of uh, 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 innovations, but really deep tech, hard tech, uh, getting much more popular. And the uh, big uh, VCs, capital markets, are putting a lot of money into this kind of uh, uh, sectors. So we see that that probably due to the, uh, the overall policy, in uh, the China, China government's policies, Chinese government's policy. So uh, I think this will keep on for the next uh, two, three years. Uh, deep tech, hard tech in China. Got it. And yeah, on the US side, just for discussion, as you see, the stock market is going insane with uh, no particular reason with an unprofitable Airbnb and DoorDash uh, IPO last, last week. Um, and, and Snowflakes, which is number one IPO this year, over a hundred billion. So in the US, um, I think because of policy, not as much of like the hardware tech per se, um, but healthcare is doing amazing. Biotech is amazing. As you can see, pharmaceutical with uh, anything related to COVID is doing great, but enterprise and data infrastructure and hence why like our fund is really focused on that. Um, just sort of the bigger trend are coming our way. Mm. So with that, I think it's the best time to build startup. I'm so excited. There's so many more and more Hong Kong founders doing this and so excited to have Beyond Venture supporting Hong Kong um, ecosystem. So uh, thank you a lot, man. And I'm going You're to welcome. wrap up now. Uh, so bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Okay. We'll see you. you in bye -bye. 2021. Take care. Yeah, take care. Bye. Right.